Hello and welcome back to my channel. So we have made it to the end of the rookies. We have made it to Moto GP and the big boys. Thankfully, there are not as many rookies in Moto GP as there are elsewhere, which is probably a very good thing because the videos were getting a little bit long. But let's just crack on and get straight into it. So first up, we have the all rookie lineup of Tech 3. So Tech 3 has obviously got both Remy Garner and Ralph Fernandez, the two top men that were in Moto2 last year. Remy Garner comes into it as the reigning Moto2 world champion with five wins under his belt, six second places and a singular third place. Whereas Ralph Fernandez comes in as the vice champion with eight wins under his belt, three, th three seconds and one third. I think that those two will be the ones to watch going into this year. Uh, I think they will be the pair that are fighting it out for the Rookie of the Year title. Accolade? Don't really know. Award? I don't know. <laughs> Who will come out on top? I'm not 100% sure. Part of me thinks that it'll probably be Raul, simply because he is quite aggressive. He is. He seems to have taken to that bike a bit better than Remy did, despite that massive crash that he had whilst he, they were testing in... Lombok. I nearly said Portimao there. That's completely wrong. It's not, that's more too. But I, I do look forward to seeing how they do. I mean, I have such a soft spot for Raul. I have done since his rookie year. He's such a lovely guy. Um, and I do hope that he can, he can get the best out of the bike this year because the Tech 3 bike has not been the best for, well, for a while now. And with all the controversy of what happened with what happened last year when he was announced it would be nice to see them put the put that behind them and just crack on and get down to where be fighting for the points and who knows i mean it's motorbike racing it could have an absolute stellar performance one day and get a podium but i look forward to seeing how they both adapt to the motor gp machines they are obviously bigger they are more power and i'm a bit concerned a bit worried but I really look forward to seeing it and I'm probably going to say that a lot because I do really like seeing how uh, rookies get on in MotoGP. Sometimes they obviously take to it really well, others take to it take a little bit longer. I have fingers crossed for Raul. I have fingers crossed for Raul to be able to do something mega. So moving on to one of the new teams on the grid, which is the Mooney VR46 team. Whether they are taking over the Avintia spot is... Kind of, I don't, I don't really know. I think they are supposed to be the ones that are taking Vintia's spot, whereas the Grassini team are coming in as a new one. I don't know. I just know that they're taking on the other, some of the other Ducati bikes. But anyway, moving on. So Luca Marini will be lining up on that team, obviously. I mean, that was always going to be a given. And he will be joined by Marco Bedzecki. So Bedzeki finished third in the Moto2 World Championship last year with one win, two second places and four thirds. So Marco is a little bit of a slower learner than uh, the likes of Raul was. However, Marco did come into it, come into like Moto2 on the, what was the then Tech 3 team. And my God, that bike was just not the one. It was a rough rough year for him and it was so nice to see in 2020 where he was actually getting on podiums he was getting wins and he was actually getting the recognition that he deserved because I think in 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 2019 it was just it was hard to watch because he wasn't able to show his talent and he is an extremely good motorbike racer so to be on an, a machine that just doesn't suit you that doesn't cooperate with you is just heartbreaking to watch. I'm interested to see on how um, how the team is, to be honest, how the team interact as a MotoGP team, how Luca and Marco gel as teammates again, because obviously they've had a year apart. I think that Marco will be able to learn a bit from Luca and his experience in MotoGP last year. And hopefully it will be able to make him feel a little bit more comfortable going into what the a team that he already knows pretty much everyone in so fingers crossed fingers crossed that marco has a good safe year next up we have grassini so grassini are another one who are new to the grid 
They will be taking on Enea Bastianini, who is obviously moving from the Avintia team, who are no longer on the grid. And he will be partnered by Fabio Di Gian Antonio. So Di Gian had such a weird year. So he he started off... I mean, the thing is with Di Gian, Di Gian's years are so roller coaster. It's unbelievable. So he goes into it, he's got a little bit of like he's getting decent results and then he gets win in her ref. he's up a height about it he's he's back he's fighting he's all this and then he just goes off a cliff again so he comes he comes into this 2022 year in his rookie year in uh moto gp uh, he was seventh in the moto 2 world championship with one win two second places and a third I don't, I really don't know about Digia. I think it might be a little bit of a humbling year for him because he's going into it with a teammate like Anea Bastianini who did some absolutely phenomenal things last year. And it might not be a case of he can do exactly the same and he might end up being back of the grid, middle of the pack. He might not be getting the results that he thinks that he can get, which is a shame but consistency wise in the past it's been a bit it's been so up and down he's another one that like in most of two we have some of those that have fantastic results one week and they're like 19th the week after and he has had moments like that and I like to believe that when you go into a new category you come in with a with a clean slate because obviously you're coming onto a, a, a machine that's totally brand new to you into a setup which is brand new to you. I mean, these guys are going into it not never doing a bike swap, which I mean we've we've seen in the past, we've seen Fabio struggle with those when he first came into it. So there's a lot for them to learn. And I hope that as the year well, I hope that they get to grips with it quite quickly rather than struggling with these new changes. And I hope that we see a little bit more consistency from Digia because he is he is fast. When he when he is comfortable, he is fast. But the consistency just hasn't been there. So hopefully that is something that changes as he moves up into uh, MotoGP. Uh, but I guess we'll see. So finally, we have with you RNF. And they are joined. They are a completely new team, obviously. Um, and they are joined by Andrea Davizioso and Darren Binder. They are replaced, so they will be replacing Patronus as the like Yamaha satellite kind of team, independent, whatever we call it. The Yamaha machines, the other Yamaha machines. So Darren, Darren is another, was a controversial one. And I also wasn't, I'm not 100% set on this. I mean, I'm all for giving people the chance, but for Moto 3 to Moto GP, uh, is just often quite the jump. And I know Jack's done it. I know Jack Miller did it a few years ago. But yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of it. But I would like to be proved wrong in this case because I do like Darren. Anyway, so Darren comes into it. He finished the Motocity World Championship in seventh with one second place and one third. It wasn't exactly an electric year. I mean, I think the most memorable thing that really happened with Darren was... That incident with Dennis Foggia, which just ended Foggia's championship hopes. And it's really unfortunate to say that you taking out another rider and absolutely ruining their championship is the most memorable thing about your season. But unfortunately, in my eyes, that is the only thing that I could pinpoint that really remind like that really sticks in my mind about what happened. So I don't really know if I'm looking forward to seeing how Darren's year goes or if I'm just kind of really apprehensive about it I'm I think I'm quite con I am in equal measures looking forward to it and being really concerned because the the change you hear the some of the riders say the change from Moto2 from Moto3 to Moto2 is unreal but a change from Moto3 to MotoGP is just it's frightening really so at the end of the day I hope that he has a safe year and I hope that he's not completely off the pace I hope that He's able to adapt well and be fighting with people. I'm just worried. Would be, yeah, I'm just worried. Like a little mother hen. I worry for their safety. So moving on to team changes. There's not actually any 
in MotoGP. Except for, depending on what you're classing as a team change. So there was obviously at the second half of 2021, after the whole debacle with Maverick and Yamaha, uh, Maverick is obviously confirmed with Aprilia, and Frankie obviously went into Yamaha, which was always going to happen, let's face it. And that's about as much as you've got team change-wise. So finally, um gonna have a look at so so finally i thought i might as well end the video with my predictions and i've written them down because then i can't go back on them and change them and be like oh yeah that, that person i don't actually normally do that i back people from the start and then kind of stick with that but hold myself accountable on winnie the pooh stationery So finally, I thought I'd end this with uh, my predictions across all three categories for world champion. I haven't gone into who I think will be vice champion, he'll be third, because honestly, that is like picking a who I think is going to be world champion is hard enough because it's kind of a anyone's game most of the time. But I do have world champions. Did write them down so I can A, a remember and B, hold myself accountable so I don't like get halfway through the season and have been rooting for a couple of people and go, oh yeah, I had them for my championship pick and and I actually had them not on my list. But have them written down on my, you can see that, Winnie the Pooh stationery. Beautiful. I know they are backwards, but you should be able to see them a bit better. So, well, it'd be actually easier if I did it that way around, wouldn't it? A magic. So finally, I thought I'd end the video by talking about who I had for my uh, predictions. I got really close to the camera there. I'm really sorry. It was quite like, I don't know if you've ever seen that picture of the woman in the ring doorbell where she's like, I've got felt a bit like that there. But anyway, um, so finally, I thought I'd end the video with my predictions across all three categories. I have only picked who I think is my world champion compared to like if all vice champion, third place. I mean, I had a hard enough time actually picking who I want to be, who I both want to be and think will be world champion. So... I, I just stuck with that. I have written it down on some beautiful Winnie the Pooh. You can see that. Winnie the Pooh stationery. So I can hold myself accountable and I don't get halfway through the year and have been rooting for a couple of people or thinking a couple of people will be it and it gets to like the end of the season. I thought, oh yeah, I got it right. And I was actually completely wrong. Um. Yes, mainly to, it's hold to myself accountable and also to remember because my memory is terrible. So, see if I can get this to... Ha ha, works. Anyway. The magic of a second phone. So, first on my list, I have Moto3 is Sergio Garcia, Moto2, Augusto Fernandez, and MotoGP, Peko Bagnaya. I think all three of them have a really good shot of getting it. Sergio had such a strong year last year, and if it wasn't for that unfortunate accident in America, I think he probably could have actually made a really good comeback. Augusto, Augusto is such a strong rider, and I think going into a unit like uh, Red Bull, KCM, IO, I really do think that he, ha he stands a really good chance. He just might have to bat his, like, keep his uh, teammate behind him. For a little bit longer. As for Peko, the Ducati is just so strong and Peko is such a strong rider and even some of the feedback that hearing coming out of the tests, uh, Yamaha, the Yamaha riders don't seem as comfortable whereas Peko's come out of it and seems to be absolutely fine. Um, he was just really unfortunate after would have that crash when he did and pretty much hand Fabio the championship. So, they are my picks. Let me know who you have um, on your lists. Oh, 
who your picks are for the championships in all three categories. And don't forget, if you are enjoying my videos, to give me a thumbs up and subscribe and let me know. Ah, just elbow my radiator. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let me know down below if there's any videos that you would like to see across the year. I am going to try and be more consistent. Um, I think I should be able to because going into this year, as much as I still have quite a lot on work-wise, um, it should be slightly easier without... Yeah, it should, it should be slightly easier for me this year. But anyway, for now, bye! So finally, just to round out the video today, I'm going to go through my predictions for 2022. Um, I have only done the world champions, mainly because uh, going through all of them for vice champion and third, it's honestly anyone's ball. So I did just decide to have a look through all three categories and pick who I think will be world champion on my beautiful Winnie the Pooh stationery, if you can say that. I have written it down mainly to uh, remember who I picked, but also to hold myself accountable because I do tend to support multiple riders through the year. Um, I, I would like to see how good my predictions are and hopefully that I don't jinx anyone. But I would like to be able to get to the end of the year and remember who I was uh, rooting for at the very start and who I had my money on without actually parting ways with my finances. So, for Moto3, I have the lovely Sergio Garcia. He is one of my favourites, and personally, I do think that he would have probably had a very good chance of taking Dennis Foggia right to Dennis Foggia and Pedro Acosta right to the very end if he hadn't been injured in America. Next up, I have Augusto Fernandez. So, Fernandez is such an incredibly strong rider. Um, and I think once he is settled with the Red Bull guys, uh, he will be able to be back on the top step and probably multiple times, really, uh, as long as he can keep his teammate Pedro Costa behind him. Because we all know that rookies in Red Bull KTM IO do like to uh, make a splash sometimes. And lastly, I have Peko Bagnaya. So I think that especially some of the, with some of the chatter that was coming out of testing, it seems that the Yamaha camp are way less confident going into this year than was expected. And I think that especially with the way that the Ducati has been performing as of late, um, I think the Peckle stands a really good chance of actually claiming the championship this year. It was quite a toss up. I had Peckle or Joanne. It was hard to pick between my two favourites, but I do think that it will be Peckle this year. But we will wait and see and see how correct I was or how wrong I was and if I jinxed anyone, which I really hope I haven't. But anyway, that is all for today. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you are enjoying any of the videos that I'm doing. And if you have any suggestions for videos that you would like to see, don't forget to drop them in the comments. And also tell me who you have picked for Moto3, Moto2 and MotoGP for your world champions or for your top three, whichever. But for now, bye!